Well, we have been um, looking in <clears throat> Isaiah, uh, but we are actually what we did was that we kind of went off a little bit just just to take the scriptures out that are we've been studying in Isaiah eight. <clears throat> And we've been comparing that with some New Testament scriptures that would validate and verify that this is this is you know what we're uh, what what we're talking about in Isaiah eight is indeed in the New Testament, and we kind of finished that up, and so we're going to go back now to uh, Isaiah chapter 8 <clears throat> and what we're going to do is read verses in that chapter that we have not yet we've not yet gone over and then we're going to circle back around and read again what we have gone over and then into what we're about to read so that we can make sure that we're in the context and we're flowing with what uh, our brother Isaiah is trying to communicate to us. All right, so Isaiah 8, and we're going to start in um, verse 14. We finished off before in verse 13, <clears throat> and we're going to start in verse 14, and you'll notice immediately that there are two groups, two groups uh, of mentioned in verse 14. Uh, the one group to that group the Lord is, is as a sanctuary. <clears throat> to the other one, he's a stone of stumbling. Okay. So, and, and it spends the greater part of it talking about those who have not followed through. So, <clears throat> let's look at it. Verse 14, And he shall be for a sanctuary. Okay. So, so remember, this is Assyria is coming down, and just like the Babylonian captivity, but now it's a, but before that it's Assyria, and they're coming down, and they're going to basically do the same thing that that the Babylonians did, <clears throat> um, and um, and in both cases there was a prophet Jeremiah and Isaiah, and and in both cases the prophet was saying, look, don't don't fight this, don't try to get help, don't do all this stuff, don't, you know, don't uh, be freaking out over it, But because this is the hand of the Lord, and we've seen it as the, the corridor, which is not there, but, and, uh, and as such, it is um, uh, uh, helping us to understand how to be with him, as Paul said it in Philippians 3, to fellowship with him in the, in the fellowship of his sufferings. And so, um, so he shall be for a, a sanctuary, a place of worship like the lamb in us, uh, being able to, we're, that we're joined with him as that sanctuary. <clears throat> but for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, um, to both the houses of Israel. Okay. Now, let me say that this, but for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense is quoted where in the New Testament? First, first Peter. Peter. First Peter. Yes. First Peter 2 8. So we're, I'm going to quote that for you. First Peter 2 8, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Hmm, wonder where he got that from, and why did he pick that particular, uh, Peter picked that particular part out of Isaiah, because, the answer is, because that was an example of what we're supposed to be doing in relationship to going through these sufferings by the nature of Christ and bringing glory to God instead of fighting everything. All right. So, so um, 
uh, 1 Peter 2, 8 reads, And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them who stumble at the word. And what is the word here? The word is not the the book of the Bible. It's not, you know, it's not the preaching of someone's sermon. The word here is the word of the Lord that you don't assemble yourselves. You don't start get, getting a helper. You don't do all of these things that you let his spirit, his nature fill you <clears throat> to understand and to be a partaker of the sufferings of Christ with him. Um, and uh, so, so that's why he's using this language. He said, he's calling this, they're stumbling at the word, not the whole word of God, not everything that's ever been written, but at the word that is directly related to our ability to partake with him in his sufferings, and they're stumbling at it. They're stumbling at it. No, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't believe that. Or, or <clears throat> you know, um, we uh, was listening to the, what was being shared before um, and uh, talking about the uh, the Good Samaritan. And, you know, this, all these people were passing by. They, he's bloody. He's beat. He's been, that's Jesus on the cross. That's Christ and him crucified. And they don't want to see that. They don't want to be a part of that, you know. Let me go to my temple, let the priest go, let the, the different ones that are religious uh, pass on by on the other side. Well, I'm not going to pass by, and neither are many of you, of, of embracing this and embracing it in the Lord by His Spirit. Not just not not just uh, the the truth theologically that is sound because Randy you've gone through all the scriptures and proved it. No, you need to go through the scripture and prove it. You even if it's search out what's been shared, you need to do more than just hear it. You need to seek it. Pursue knowing the Lord in this way because. You know what happened to the uh, the Syrian captivity, and they when they didn't do it is they were scattered forever. The ten tribes of Israel, the lost tribes, scattered and have never been seen since in that in the sense of Israel. And what happened in Babylon? They were taken into captivity, and there they were held until they began to understand. And of course, the ones that, that, that were to understand, for the most part, would be brought back into what God had. The others, many others, not all others, but many of them would stay there and they would just make their home in Babylon and they would live in Babylon the way Babylon was instead of the way, uh, the way God had it planned. Uh, where you would live in Babylon, you would live in all of this stuff, but you would have the spirit of the Lamb. You would have the, His spirit and nature in that. <clears throat> so, um, uh, so still in First Peter uh, <clears throat> two eight, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them that stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. And that first Peter over and over says, you're called to this. This is what you're what what you have been called to. Jesus gave us an example that we should walk in this. And it's talking about this very spirit, this very thing. It, 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 it even says in first Peter that the prophets desired to look into it. They didn't fully see it, but we get to be partakers of it. So. Um, and that when we say partaker, not of suffering, a partakers of Christ, a partakers of being one with him in his spirit and saying, we're not just with you, Jesus, because you saved us from hell and torment and bad things. But we want to be with you in your nature and in your way. And we want to be able to go through these things and give you glory instead of looking like all the other beasts that are crying out and yelling and complaining and saying this ain't right and 
this is unfair and this shouldn't happen to me because I'm special and all that stuff. We're into they were appointed. Okay, <clears throat> so back to uh, Isaiah. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In other words, these people that are resisting are a snare to the, to the people, to the inhabitants. The, the leadership, and that's what, that's what the Good Samaritan is, that's Jesus being crucified over there. That's him being beaten. That's him being, you know, rejected, excuse me, passed by. Um, that is their, that's the leadership that says, this is the way it has always been. And this is the way that it'll be. And Jesus, Jesus came along and said, no, that's not the way God meant it. And they passed by. They rejected Christ and him crucified. Okay. So, um, uh, so you see that, that there, the, the leadership in that sense is a snare to the inhabitants. And, and it's something I, I, I'll probably mention, I don't know. But think about this. God originally said to Jeremiah when it pertained to the Babylonian captivity, he said, tell the kings, tell the princes, tell all the priests, tell all the leadership that if you will submit according to my word, not be disobedient to the word that I'm telling you, but if you will submit to my word, which is to submit to Nebuchadnezzar and understand that this is, I'm allowing this so that you might give back instead of always take, you might give back to me the spirit that I put in you, but you haven't perfected. So this is your chance to walk in it. <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, that that that's that that spirit that that he wants formed in us is what he's after nothing else nothing else we say well he you know no it's another version of the father saying i just want my son i want the lamb out of you uh you can fake you know, the Lord could say, the Father could say, you can, you can fake it in church. You can fake it among your religious friends. You can even preach it. The Lamb of God or Christ and Him crucified. And you can even preach it. Or you can pass by, of course. But you can, you can preach it. But never, never embrace me as I am slaughtered lamb upon the throne after it's all over with not sitting in great glory not looking victorious but a, a lamb as though it had been slain and the word there is slaughtered slaughtered bloody and oh, i don't want to see that i don't want to see that that doesn't that doesn't appeal to me well it doesn't matter if it appeals to you or not if that's what god wants you can you can you can run after in this life you can run after what appeals to you whether it be the world the flesh the devil or <clears throat> anything else um, but when when it comes to standing before God it's going to be what what is the thing that appealed to him that he wanted that he desired did we fulfill his good pleasure as it talks about over and over in Ephesians or did we choose ourself, you know, ourself? <clears throat> um, for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and, and many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Okay, we'll come back to that because we actually saw that in the verses before this. Verse 16. Bind up the testimony. What? Bind up the testimony? Okay, so 
let's see a show of hands of all those of you who really understand what bind up the testimony is. Okay, raise your hand. Okay, let me count them. <laughs> okay. This is important in the, in the context of this that's coming, this Assyrian captivity or this Babylonian captivity. Uh, don't fool around. Don't protect yourself. Don't get everybody on your side. Don't justify. Bind up the testimony. Well, and not just that. And, and, where am I? Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among, mm, what a strange next two words. Seal up the law among my disciples. Mm. That's what Jesus called the 12 that he picked, that he knew one day I'm going this is where I'm going. I'm going to the cross. I'm going to, to Babylon and Assyria and every other spirit that, 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 that the, the people of God have in their ministry. And they're going to use their ministry and their position and their calling to destroy me. And my disciples will see it. And then... When the Spirit of God comes, the Holy Spirit, He will begin to reveal that that's my Spirit and that's what I want in my people. All right. So, bind up the testimony. <clears throat> um, uh, where are you? See, I keep getting off of that one right there. Uh, testimony, I seal the law among my disciples. Verse 17, there it is. And I will wait upon the Lord, and I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Verse 18, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me, quoted in Hebrews 2.13, And again, I will put my trust in him, and again, behold, I and the children with which God hath given me, are, are for signs, Emmanuel. Remember, this is out of Isaiah 8. Emmanuel, twice uh, uh, being used. Um, Emmanuel are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Okay, now I wrote a little thing here. Now let's read the scriptures before it that we have already studied sometime in the past to see the context here and then see if they will fit with what first Peter was trying to communicate. All right. So here we go. <clears throat> we're going to take it from Isaiah seven now, and we're going to read all the way through what we've studied thus far, even into reading what we've already just read so that we can see the context. All right. Isaiah eight, verse seven. <clears throat> Now, therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters the, of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria. Here it comes. Here it comes. God's going to allow it. God's bringing them up. And all his glory. And he shall come up over all his channels and shall go over his banks. And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overthrow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck, and the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breadth of thy land, O Emmanuel, God with us. Verse 9. Now that now that up to that, seven and eight were telling them what's coming. This is coming. This is coming. You have to be ready for it. You have to be in tune. This is what's coming. That's what he's saying. Now verse 9. Now he's going to say, not what's coming, but what you don't want to be doing. Don't do this when it comes. Don't be blind thinking this is just the devil or this is something else. This is me. So don't do these things. 
Um, so this is what they will say. Oh, they'll say this. Associate yourselves, O ye people, or this the Lord saying to them, associate yourselves, O ye people, and you shall be broken in pieces. So he's saying when that's, com that's coming, it's going to come. It's, it's going to come. And you should be in tune because I'm warning you in advance. So he says, now, here's what you're thinking and here's what you're going to do. And I'm going to tell you in advance, don't do it. You know, Peter's going, I will, you know, I will uh, stand with you. I will not forsake you. I will die for you. And Jesus says, it's coming. You're going to deny me three times. You're not all that you think you've got in you, Peter. Remember the guy who wrote first Peter? All well, this was part of the teaching, the training that got it in him when he failed and failed, failed. And Jesus is saying, all that you think you have in you, all of that stuff that you think so good, I will, I will even die for you. He said, you know, today, not, not next month. You're going to deny me three times. You won't, you won't stand when the flood comes, he's saying to him. Maybe he's saying that to us too. You won't, you won't, because you think, because you are secure in what you know, and you think that that's going to be the very thing that is going to get, not only get you through, but make you a hero. And of course, he drew his sword, cut off somebody's ear, and Jesus had to rebuke him, saying, you know, you look, don't associate yourselves. You'll be broken in pieces. Don't, don't d defend yourself. Don't defend me. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and you shall be broken in pieces. And give ear, all ye far countries. Gird yourselves, meaning God saying, I'm just telling you, uh, I, even all these far countries, don't try to gird yourself with help from other places. Gird yourselves and you shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves and you shall be broken in pieces. Remember, he says it twice. Verse um, 10. Take counsel together and it shall come to naught. He's saying that all this stuff, you know, this is, uh, you know, uh, this is the wrong approach. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. There it is, Emmanuel again. For God, don't do that, for God is with us. But God is with us was first introduced in Isaiah in relationship to, you know, you want a sign? I'll give you a sign. A virgin shall give birth. To a baby, the weakest of weak, not just a virgin, but a young, young girl and a little baby. There's your God with us. That's the God I want with you. I want that kind of deep weakness to be sign enough for you. OK, um, we're just repeating all that we, we've shared, you know, kind of building up here. For the Lord spake thus to me. Um, with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people. This is, this is Isaiah saying, okay, I, I, I need to tell you guys, God spoke to me, okay? And he told me not to walk in the way that y'all are going to walk. Even though I'm telling you, this is Isaiah, even though I'm telling you not to do this, you're going to do it. But he's telling me, now he's talking to me, don't walk in the way of these guys. 
um, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. So he's saying, don't say we're going to have a confederacy. We're going to get a confederacy. We're going to get a bunch of people together, and we're going to stand, and we're going to fight, and we're going to show that we God's with us. And God's saying, that's not God with us. That's not Emmanuel. And he's saying, neither fear ye their fear. The people that are going to be afraid. That God's saying, don't be afraid. <laughs> uh, um, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And we found that the phrase, sanctify the Lord, uh, has, was only used in one place in the Old Testament, and that's right here, <clears throat> and that's quoted by Peter in First Peter. First Peter. All right. So <clears throat> now we're moving into <clears throat> what we just read. This is in the context. We're just straight going down um, Isaiah eight. Next verse, <clears throat> and he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Um, and again, that's quoted in 1 Peter 2, 8. To both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and shall fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony. See, he's saying, he's saying, look, this is coming and this is going to be their response. But I'm telling you and I'm telling you to tell them, bind up, bind up the testimony. Bind up that and seal the law among my disciples. These are not just Jews or religious Jews or, or priests or these are his, the Lord's disciples. This is what he wants from disciples. All right. <clears throat> and um, verse 17, And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob. I will look for him. Behold, verse 18, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs, Emmanuel, and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. <clears throat> okay. Um, so just to show that this is dealing with that, I want to read out of 1 Peter now and show you that this is what 1 Peter is about. Okay. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Okay. Now I'm going to read, I'm going to, <clears throat> I'm going to stay in chapter 2 and I'm going to read a bunch of the scriptures in there, but I'm going to skip a little bit here. So 1 Peter 2, starting with verse 6. Okay. Wherefore also it is contained in the scriptures, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. When he says he lays him as that, he means he's laying him into a tomb as that. He is putting him into a death that is that that is laid as the chief cornerstone. Um, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded when all this stuff comes. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious, but unto them which are disobedient, see, here it is. There's this disobedience that rises against the Lamb, that it's war making war. And there was war in heaven, and there was war against the Lamb. Um, <clears throat> but unto them which are disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, this is the rejecting of Jesus as the stone. And now, instead of being a cornerstone of the sanctuary, 
To them, it has become a rock of offense. Um, verse 8, And the stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient unto all, uh, unto. Also they were appointed. Um, verse 12, Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, you remember the chart, evildoers, uh, they speak of you as an evildoer, <clears throat> um, they may by your good works, meaning by this nature and how you approach this, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Verse 19, for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when you're buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps, who did no sin, meaning he didn't, when they when they did all this to him, he didn't call 10,000 angels. He didn't self-protect. He didn't do all that. He went through it in a right spirit to bring glory to the Father. <clears throat> Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. See, don't say, say the word and I'll break you in pieces. <laughs> um, meaning using your mouth to justify yourself or to rail back. Um, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Okay? And that's... Um, uh, some of this is seen in particularly looking at verse 15 through 17. <clears throat> um, let's just read that. And this is Isaiah 8, 15. Isaiah 8, 15 through 17. And many among them shall stumble and fall, exactly almost the same words, and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples, and I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Okay. And um, I'm not sure... Yeah, I think it is here. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I'm going to just read a little bit on this part right here. So um, in verse 15, which we just read, in verse 15, we have the stumbling at this word of not fighting back, but being a lamb. They're stumbling. They're stumbling at the truth as as God has set it forth here. Verse 16, in verse 16, we have a binding up of the testimony, which is sealed as a, uh, 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 sealed as his nature among his disciples. In verse 17, we have, let me read 17 for you. And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. In verse 17, we have, Though the corridor makes it feel like the Lord has hid his face while you are in the sufferings, yet there is a trust in him as you go through the fellowship of his sufferings. All right. <clears throat> so, I am not sure. I did talk a little bit at first, so let me get a little drink here. All right, I want to talk about sealing up the testimony. I want us to understand. I need to understand. <clears throat> but that was not randomly a phrase thrown in there that we're not supposed to understand or we're just supposed to be, oh, I'll be more committed. <clears throat> None of that. 
it's very specific. It's very real. It's very much a part of this area of understanding. <clears throat> and so I want to give you examples of the testimony and the relationship to that in this context. So to do that, we'll start out in um, <clears throat> We'll start out in the book of Revelation, but we have it in many other places. And we'll go through some of those. All right. Revelation 1, verse 2 and verse 9. <clears throat> now, why am I doing this? I want to, I want to, <laughs> I want to seal the testimony up. I want it to be sealed up in you. I want you to through these scriptures, we're not just reading a bunch of scriptures. We're not, you know, we're not wasting our time. We are opening our hearts that the Spirit of God may take regular scriptures that we know and show us things. And in this case, the sealing of the testimony. So that we can be assured, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different scriptures from all over the New Testament that will that will keep saying this over and over, giving the example of what it means to seal up the testimony. Now, um, Uh, to be anticlimactic, because we do have a class that follows um, right after this one. It's the book of Revelation, right? Well, <laughs> then <clears throat> we're just going to read an intro sort of to the testimony and see it in a context where we can start to recognize that it what it relates to. All right. And then we'll stop because we got this other class coming. All right. Revelation 1, verse 2 and verse 9. <clears throat> the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And of course, we read that and we go, we go, oh, he's going to show us the future or he's going to show us the end time. Well, really, he's going to show you what spirit he wants you to have when you get into these sufferings that that are that are either we, you know, the sufferings that come our way in many cases, we either make them the sufferings of Christ or we react to them and make them of the devil. Not that they really were all initiated from the devil or all initiated from God, but we don't know enough. And when I say that, I'm not saying we, I'm just saying we don't know enough to discern what's what. And we need to dig and cry and say, Lord, I want to be with you. And, and I don't, if I miss this, then you will never be able to come forth in a way in me that you've longed for after your image. And the Father will never get the sun this way out of me. So I don't need this so I don't fail. I need this so that you get what you truly long for. All right. <clears throat> the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom of God, or in the kingdom. Isn't it funny that I'm, I'm a companion in tribulation and in the kingdom? Wait a minute. Most of us would say, no, you know, you're either one or the other. You're either in tribulation, and therefore you don't have the kingdom because you're not ruling and reigning all over everybody. Or, or you see, 
that this is the kingdom, that through much tribulation you must enter the kingdom. Companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, not power of Jesus Christ, not, not miracles of Jesus Christ, not deliverance of Jesus Christ, but this patience that he's trying to work into us in these situations was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus. So he's saying, and we'll see this more and more and more, uh, we're going to quit after this, but we will see that this is the theme of the testimony. And, um, and so he understands this. He says, look, I'm, you know why I'm in the Isle of Patmos? For the word of God, remember, you remember the word, not being disobedient to the word. And he wasn't talking about just the scriptures in general, or he was talking about this word. And he, he, you know, all these guys got that from the prophets. Um, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ, and I am here, he's saying, I am here that I can bind up the testimony and give it to Jesus Christ while in these afflictions. That may not explain a lot, but we'll, we'll cover more as we go. You know, you guys, uh, you really got to love, love the scriptures to listen to me because I read a lot of scripture. Somebody once said, Randy, you don't preach, you just read scripture. And I said, Better to give you his word than mine. Praise God. Amen. Thank you for your hunger. And thank you for your patience with me. I mean, I have spent much. I, I'll just say I have spent time before the Lord to hear these things for you and for his glory, mainly for his glory, so that we all would be able to bind up the testimony. And, uh, but you, you, you keep coming. You, you don't understand every word I say. I don't know that I understand every word I say. But your heart keeps coming, not after Randy or after the teaching or after New Creation Fellowship or Life in the Spirit or any of that stuff. It keeps coming after the Lord. And I, I honor you. In my heart, I honor you for your continued faithfulness to Jesus and being willing, as it were, to hear stuff like this and not pass by, not pass by and leave Christ crucified, bloody, beat, you know, like the in the story of the Good Samaritan. Um, but literally coming, coming to him. And not again, not to me, not to what I share, but him and longing. So, Lord, I just say it again. Just thank you. Thank you for these that are yours. They're not mine, they're yours. And I ask that as you open their hearts and their eyes more and more, even as you open, will you open mine? Till we all come to the measure, the stature, the fullness of this slaughtered lamb. And this way, this way, oh, to the Father, which is through the cross. That's what you said, Jesus. When they were talking about going to the Father, you said, I am the way. Let us come to the Father in that way by your nature through us in the worst of trials, in the least of trials. And may you have 
the sweet savor of lamb that is offered up from the earth, from humans. May it rise and rise to you and may it may it be to your good pleasure that you get your son in that way. So we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.